Hi everyone and welcome to the final episode of Conquer the Curse at Benfica with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So this is our series where we try and turn over the curse that was placed on Benfica in the 1960s by a former manager, Bella Gutman. He didn't get his own way, didn't get the contract he was looking for, walked away from the club and cursed them saying they'd never win another European trophy in 100 years. And about 64 years in or whatever it is since that point, they've been in eight finals and lost them all. Today... We've got them through to their ninth final, this time in the Champions League. And it's as good a point as any for us to conclude this series. So, can we conquer the curse? Can we win a European trophy? Paris Saint-Germain stand in our way. Let's see how we get on. Welcome back to Benfica. So fourth season, we've spent three seasons struggling a little bit in the Champions League whilst absolutely dominating everything domestically. For about the last three seasons, we've literally not lost any of our trophies. We've won everything in the Portuguese domestic scene. Can we translate that to success on the European front, though? In this fourth season, we finally got a good first-team squad together that enabled us to go on a bit of a run. We got through the group stages. We've taken out the likes of Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund and Liverpool along the way in the knockout stages. And today, in a one-off game in Munich, we play against Paris Saint-Germain in the final of the Champions League. Obviously, they've got an abundance of riches. We've got a very good team. Can we win it? That is the question. Right, let's go straight in and have a look at our tactics page and see what the personnel are like in terms of fitness, etc. And there's one key problem that we've got. And it is that Mukoko is only available for the bench. He's got a fitness issue. He's been out for the last week or so. It's been a bit of a problem. Well, it's been actually a last couple of weeks or so. So he's not quite at match sharpness. So I'm not going to um, risk him from the start. Simic comes in instead of him. But all of our other first team 11 pretty much are there from the most recent games. And I say the recent games because, again, Everton is only on the bench and I've really struggled to get him to match sharpness. He's there, but you can see his match sharpness is awful at the moment because he just hasn't played the game. Every time he comes back in, he keeps getting little knocks and little niggles again. And so Marrera still plays on that left-hand side. So with Marrera in and Simic in, those two slightly lesser players than what I'd really like to have in my first 11 for this game. But this is why we have a squad. And it's all uh, always been a squad game, hasn't it, really, for many, many years. So we will do the best with it that we can. I think this is going to be a real challenge. But on one game, you never know, do you, really? So for today's match against PSG, final episode of Conquer the Curse. Can we do it? We go in with Sanchez in goal, Porro at right back, Ben Zabini at left back, uh, Badiashili and Zabanier in central defence. Tonali and Verratti in central midfield. Trincao on the right. Marrera on the left. And Simic and Nunes up top. And pretty much the entire squad that's available to us on the bench. 12-man bench for the final, which is great. So we can make a few changes in a lot of different positions. So let's get into this final match and see what happens. So just before we go and do the team talk, the team sheets have come in. It's worth having a look. They're a bit good. And I'm not saying we're not, but Hakimi's in there. Uh, they've got uh, Messi in there, Kessie, Asensio, Neymar, Adeyemi. If you know young Adeyemi, he becomes a superstar in Football Manager. This is now four seasons in. He's probably becoming a superstar on Football Manager. There's a lot of great players. Tony Cruz is on the bench. Leon Bailey's there as well. This, this is a really good outfit. What I would say about ours is that our first team 11 is pretty much matching up to most uh, teams that we come across, even in Europe. 
is when we scratch the surface of that and go into our squad players a little bit where we might struggle just a bit. So most of our first team players are out on the pitch today, which is good. Let's see how we get on. So into the dressing room we go. We're going to go and absolutely just go for this one. So outstretched arms. I want to ignore the recent praise of the media. Just play your natural game. Let's focus on ourselves, not on the occasion, not on them. And see what this final can bring. So in we go. Let's see. They're in the 4-3-3. They're playing Messi in a central midfield position. Quite deep compared to what we might be used to. Maybe as he's aged, that's where they see his best position. A little bit like Paul Scholes did at Man United in the last few seasons that he played. Dropped deeper and deeper and became like almost the quarterback, didn't he, for the way that Man United played. Maybe that's what Messi's being asked to do as well. Uh, but even so, they've got a very, very good setup. Let's see how we can compete with them. They start with the first highlight, three minutes in, back to their goalkeeper, into midfield. We win it. Drink out over the top for Darwin Nunes. Can he put it away? He gets pushed wide, puts the ball into the box, and the defender just got there before we did. But we win back possession again in midfield. And again, we uh, the loose balls in midfield from PSG keep giving us the ball back. Can we make them pay for it? And there's a chance, and we do make them pay for it. Four minutes in, the defender put the ball back to the goalkeeper, I think it was, and Dubravka messed it up completely. The cross originally comes in, and it falls to Mendes on this uh, left-hand side. He tries to head the ball back to the goalkeeper, and the striker intercepts the ball just in front of the keeper, takes it round him because he's now so close, the keeper can't do anything about it. And puts the ball in the back of the net. And we go 1-0 up. We're going to stay in the positive mentality just for now. We're not going to go and sit and defend and try and hold on to what we've got just yet. We're only eight minutes into the game. There's a long way to go. But this is really positive. Badia Shili, our central defender, up for the set piece. Gets a chance from long range at the edge of, edge of the box. And puts it narrowly wide. 13 minutes in though, PSG have just registered their first shot at goal. And now they've got a corner kick and they've got a goal. And that's the problem with someone like PSG. You give them one chance and they tend to put it away if you're not very careful. Neymar on the corner kick on the far side. Kurt Zuma rises above everybody else at the near post. Heads the ball into the top right hand corner as we look at it. Goalkeeper was nowhere near it. And we go back to 1-1. At least we got that early goal to make sure that we're still in this game a little bit at this point. As PSG begin to turn the screw just a little bit. It's gone very quiet. We're now at 34 minutes and hardly a shot has happened since those uh, couple of goals, maybe one or two each. And now is a chance for us down the left-hand side. And that was a real chance. We got a very good ball in from Marrera. Simic, I think it was, on the end of it. And he should have converted it. It was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper stood up tall and eventually parried the ball away, unfortunately. But at least we're creating some chances, but it's these moments that are most nervy when PSG get hold of the ball. Messi drops it back in defence just to keep it. They've gone all the way back to the goalkeeper. He clears it long. They win the loose ball, and then we sort it out defensively. The ball was tried to play over the top. Our defender heads it back to our own goalkeeper. He clears it upfield, but that gives it straight back to PSG, unfortunately. And then they give it straight back to us. It's very nervy. And that was really stupid <clears throat> from our goalkeeper. He tried to clear it, but passed it straight to the striker who had a clear shot at goal, who fortunately got his angles wrong and he just battered it against the post. But he really should have scored from that one. It was an absolute gift from Sanchez. I don't know what he was playing at. And we are fortunate a little bit to go in at 1-1 at half time. That very early goal has really helped us. Fifth minute lead for us, 17th minute equaliser for, uh, for them. We've had a couple of yellow cards since and not a lot else, really. So what do we do at half time? Well, we continue on roughly with what we're doing. Uh, we're going to pump the fists. Uh, we're going to say uh, it's time for everyone to dig in, give everything you've got for this particular performance. Once we go out onto pitch, we'll go into the shout. We'll fire them up for the start of this second half. And we'll just see how this second half begins. We're picking up yellow cards quite a lot. That's our fifth yellow card. 
some of our players are probably going to have to be substituted to protect ourselves a little bit from that as the game progresses. Don't want to get a player sent off if we can help it because that would really cause us a problem for the last section of the game. Goal clearance from PSG goes straight to our defender, Ben Zabini. He puts it through, and we get through on goal, and Darwin Nunes again through with the goalkeeper, but again the goalkeeper wins that particular battle, parries it out for a corner. Corner comes into the near post, they get it cleared. It wasn't a good corner click, kick at all, didn't even beat the first man. And I am beginning to concern myself with these yellow cards. I really don't want a, a sending off. So at 63 minutes on the clock, I think slightly earlier than normal, I'm going to make some personnel changes and take at least a couple of these yellow cards off. They're all in our defensive area. All four of our defenders plus our defensive midfielder have all picked one up, unfortunately. So what can we do about that? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take uh, Badiashili out and put Thiat in. Uh, he can play for the last little section in the centre of mid uh, defence. Porro at right back. We've got Selic who can come in for him. Those are the two that we're going to take out at the back. I don't think I can afford to take any more of those out because we've also, unfortunately, got a very underperforming Verratti who is one of the real key people that we bought in this season that has changed our fortunes around in Europe but not producing it in the final. So we're going to bring Bernardo in who's played pretty well recently when he's played and just give some energy to us in midfield. I think that's all we can make. I think we're just going to check just to make sure that there's no different rules in the final. There isn't. Those are the subs we can make, so that's fair enough. We're going to have to leave the attacking section as it is, just to see if we can see it through. If we get through to extra time, that will probably give us an extra sub that we can make. But 15, uh, sorry, 20 minutes or so to go, 25 minutes to go of the game. It's still all to play for. They've had 12 shots, but only two on target, seven and four for us. They've had more possession than we've had, but we are still in this game. And it's our highlight, left-sided throw-in, halfway into their half. Ben Zabini on the ball, Bernardo getting involved in the play. Good interplay there, and then Zuma wins the ball defensively for them and sets them off on a very speedy counter-attack. And here's the big problem. Ben Zabini was one that we didn't take off. And he's got a second yellow card. It was, it was a tricky, tricky thing to decide out of the five who was going to be the players to come off. Unfortunately, we kind of didn't get it right, seemingly. And Ben Zabini gets sent off. And there's still 11 minutes of the game to play. So what can we do about this one? Um, this is tricky, isn't it? We could reduce Tonali back into a holding role. We can bring Selic across, I guess. Do I want to bring? Do I want to do both of those things? Not really. I think we'll just bring Selic across and create a back three, and keep the rest as it is, really, and hope beyond all hope maybe that we can find a way to get through to extra time and then maybe even penalties we've reduced the mentality down from positive to balanced just to see if we can keep the ball a little bit better but we've still got two players in our defensive third that are on yellow cards on the pitch still i couldn't afford another one Let's see how we go. So let's see if the time will tick through kindly for us. It's doing pretty well. We're up to 88 minutes and nothing has happened so far. We are seemingly suppressing the game enough. And here's a chance for us on a corner kick. And we get a goal in the 91st minute. Ten men, one man down. In the 91st minute, we get a corner kick. And it's sent into that near post area. Tonali on the corner kick. Zabarnier above the defenders. And with seconds remaining, we take a 2-1 lead. We're going to pause the game immediately. It's a kickoff highlight. So it means that either they're going to counter on us very early from the kickoff that's just about to take place and get a chance themselves, or we're going to nick the ball and have another chance. This is nervy stuff, but what we are going to do before that happens is we're going to go into the shouts and we're going to go and say... Uh, we're going to go and praise them for what they've just done. I could have asked them to focus, but I think, well, that's too defensively minded, having just taken the lead. We're going to praise them for what they've done, get some morale into them and see what happens. Right, so we are 90 second minute. We've got three minutes more of injury time 
and it's an immediate highlight on the kickoff. Let's see what happens. So PSG kick off. They keep the ball. They send it back to their defensive unit to draw us into them. We're holding our shape well. They've gone long over onto the far side, uh, the near side as we look at it. Of course, there's no defender out there as much anymore because we've had to reshape our lineup. Messi wins the ball in the penalty box, gets the cross in, and, they, and we clear it just about. And then that highlight goes. That was their chance, seemingly. And the full-time whistle goes... And I can't actually quite believe it. We went down to 10 men and in the 92nd minute, we got a headed winning goal and we conquer the curse. Bella Gutman must be rolling in his grave at this point. At 60 something years out of the 100 that he cursed the club for saying they'd not win another European trophy. I came along and I changed it. And we win the European Champions League to go with pretty much everything that we've won domestically this season as well. And that is why this was the final episode. Whether we win or lose, I don't think I could have done a lot better than this. And that is pretty spectacular. Those two central midfielders, although he didn't play brilliantly today in the final, bringing Tonali and Verratti into that central midfield changed everything in the Champions League this season. They brought experience and quality about them. And it took us to a Champions League. And we conquer the curse. So obviously there's no uh, next episode to talk about. This is it. But what I wanted to come back just at the end of this episode just to say is that we are finishing this series and this series will now not be replaced in my YouTube schedule. Those that have been with us for a while will know that we're gradually closing down the YouTube side of things and pushing ourselves more onto the live streaming Twitch side of things. So now Tuesdays and Thursdays there will not be an episode of anything moving forward other than the occasional video that might randomly come out for various reasons. But other than that, we are closing things down. So we've still got Rolling in the Isles to complete our British Isles Journeyman series. That's going to happen Monday, Wednesday, Friday from this time moving forward until it reaches its natural conclusion of one Champions League final should we get there. But other than that, we're beginning to do this. We're beginning to close down. So thank you very much for watching this series. I hope you've really enjoyed it, those that have been with us all the way through. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a good fun one to do. And we actually succeeded. And I am a little bit surprised by that. I thought PSG were potentially going to be too strong. But in the end, we managed to conquer the curse. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Thank you for your support on it. Thank you for your support on YouTube in general. And uh, yeah, keep watching Rolling in the Isles to that concludes. And thank you very much. Till next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.